Hi, I'm Carl, and welcome to LARP Legion. So, today's video is going to be a quick one right before Biko about the combat rules, just to make sure that everyone is aware of how combat works, so that everything goes super smoothly, and that there are no issues on the battlefield or confusion. So this video is going to be separated in different sections, which you can go and click through to get exactly to the part you want to be at, so just on the play bar. First we're going to have equipment, then we're going to have weapon, then death, healers, war machine, and then monsters. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. To begin with, when there is a fight at Biko, everyone is going to wear a little armband. Well, little flag armband thing. It's either going to be yellow or blue. You need to tie it somewhere visible, preferably on your arm, just for fair play reason, but also to avoid any of your teammate being confused. You don't want to try to sneak in and then some people from your front thinking that you're an enemy and then use all those resources to run after you for no reason. So on the arm, best place to go. Then everyone is allowed an indestructible shield at Biko, meaning that you can have a shield on your person somewhere that is indestructible. You might want to tie it on your back so that you can get shot in the back, on your arm, whatever, whatever you use, you can have that shield. So that's good to know. It can be a small one, a big one, but you should carry a shield because why not? It's part of your equipment. For armor pieces, clothing, meaning gambeson as well, do not give any point of armor, sadly. But any piece of armor being soft metal or leather is going to give you one point of armor. Soft metal, including chainmail. Now, any piece of hard metal or layered metal is going to give you two points. For example, this here is my chest piece. As you can see, metal with leather under. This gives me two point of armor. But an important thing to note is that the back only has little tiny pieces of metal. So if I were to get hit on the back, these would sadly not count. So this would only be one point of armor. It's very important to note, just so that you don't try or just by accident kind of cheat. So keep that in mind. Now, let's move on to weapons. Weapons are pretty simple actually. Any weapon only does one point of damage, meaning that you don't have any overpowered weapons or anything like that. Any weapon will do that no matter the length or the size. Any weapon under 112 centimeter can be wielded with one hand, but anything above 112 centimeters needs to be wielded with two hands. So for example, here, um, <laughs> it can't really get in the frame, but this is my Naginata from Atelier Nemesis. Love this weapon. The thing is, it's a two-handed weapon, meaning that if I were to hit someone, but at the last second, I kind of let go of one hand to get that extra reach, that hit does not count. It is only with two hands. Now, another thing to note is that the strength of the hit does not matter. As long as the hit connects, it's a hit. So there's no point in going harder or stronger to hit someone. Any hit counts as a hit. You will or may also find javelins on the field. Those javelins can be thrown at people. The thing to note though is that you are not allowed to throw them or aim them at someone's head. Accidents happen, of course, but never willingly aim it at someone's head. If you hit someone with a javelin, it only counts as one point of damage still. Same thing for bows. If you shoot someone with your bow, that arrow only does one point of damage. Now, for people that are going to be doing archery with bows and arrows, there's one very important thing to note. You do not shoot your arrows to do volleys. Don't do that, it's super dangerous. You don't know where it's gonna land. It could, and also just the velocity of an arrow coming down, even if it's a LARP arrow, is very dangerous. Now, talking about LARP arrows, only flat-headed ones are allowed. No round tip ones. They actually have been banned at Biko and at a lot of LARPs now too, because they are dangerous, because they're the shape of an eye socket, meaning they can go in even though they're fake arrows, so. Those are not allowed, don't bring them to Biko, you won't be able to use them. Now, also about bows and arrows. There's a general rules that if you only see the person's head or you don't really have a clear shot, 
you do not take the shot. Don't take the shot. I mean, it's simple. There's a good chance that you're gonna hit the head, the face, and like you're not allowed to shoot there anyway. So either wait for them to give yourself a clear shot or aim somewhere else. It's a giant battlefield with hundreds of people. You probably have a better shot somewhere. Or if someone runs at you and you only see their head, either run away or try to aim for their legs because someone who is legged is pretty much dead. Death or damage at Biko. The way it works is that you have your points of armor as I mentioned. So let's say I'm wearing this fancy here chest plate. This chest plate now gives me a total of three hit points because we have two points of armor and then my hit point for my own body. You have the sections for your limbs, which are your arms and legs. If you lose an arm, you put your arm behind your back, preferably to show that it's down. And that means that if you were using a two-handed weapon, you now cannot use that weapon. So you can always carry a dagger close to you so that if you lose one of your hands for your two-handed usage you can just switch to that dagger and do a lot of damage if you can get close enough if you lose a leg what you need to do is you need to get down on one knee you're not allowed to move around so you need to stay stationary where you got downed i mentioned the limbs but we have the most important body parts which are the head and the chest if one of those two places gets completely depleted of hp meaning your armor and then your hit point you are automatically dead that means that if let's say you are not wearing a helmet and you only have your chrome dome out and someone manages to sneak a little hit on your head, you're instantly dead, which is a good reason to wear a helmet at Biko, not just for safety purposes, but you know, it kind of sucks to be wearing a bunch of armor and then be killed in one hit. If you hit someone there by accident, the best thing to do and that most people will do is you just go down on one knee as if you had died just to so sportsmanship but also that it was not on purpose there are certain sections that do not count for hits a hit to the face throat or groin does not count if ever you do hit someone there by accident it's always a good idea to check in with them you can be like are you okay and then you keep fighting if you get killed at Biko, you need to get down on one knee to show that you're dead but it is not allowed to fake being dead so if you are dead what you do is you grab your weapon and you hold it upside down to signify that you are dead so no confusion there if you're dead don't hold it that way or else you might get whacked but also if you're not dead don't hold it upside down that's super cheap don't do that but also you're not allowed to fake it to try to get oh i'm dead and then when people get back close to you you whack them don't do that it's messed up if you're dead and you're down on one knees the rule for respawn is that if there's combat around you you stay on one knee and wait for combat to move past you and then you get up otherwise if a referee or a marshal that's what we call them at Biko, if a marshal tells you to move and go to respawn you can get up a good rule of thumb is if let's say you were in a one-on-one -on -one fight on the side and someone kills you count 10 seconds and then you can get up a good thing to note though also is that there are healers at Biko, so if you get down it can be worth to stay there to see if a healer is gonna come is gonna come by but there's no real point of just staying down because <laughs> there's not that many healers at Biko. so count that 10 seconds then get up or wait for comeback to move away and then get up another thing to note when you are dead is that you're not allowed to talk you can kind of joke around and say nice shot to whoever killed you and blah 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 but you're not allowed to do anything that would be considered metagaming meaning let's say you just got backstab and you're dead you're not allowed to yell to your teammate backstab backstab the dead don't speak it's simple now also when you are dead and you walk back to spawn you walk back to spawn you're not allowed to run back to spawn when you come back from spawn you can run as much as you can but on your way back to spawn you need to walk and take your time just to be fair because otherwise everyone would just be running and the weight of dying would not be as heavy. Now for healers, if you are healing someone, what you need to do is touch them physically with a body part of yours connecting to one of theirs. Meaning you can't just go with your weapon and touch them from a distance and heal them that way. You need to actively touch the person with your own person. Now, if you are the one being healed, 
what you need to do is stay completely stationary, meaning you cannot move, cannot also attack, but you're allowed to defend yourself with a shield if you have one. Really important thing to note though that is that if you do move or if you do attack, that completely restarts the healing process. There are different times for different hourglasses, but that is on the healer to know, and the healer should always make sure that their hourglass is completely empty before flipping it. When the healing process is completed, you get all of your hit points and armor points back, and you can then proceed back onto the battlefield. Next, let's talk about War Machines. War Machines are coming in different shapes or form at Pico. The most common ones you're gonna see are gonna be cannons and ballistas. How it works is pretty simple. You get shot by them, you're dead. You are dead. Even if it hits your shield, even if it grazes you, it touches your weapon, you're dead. It's instant, you take a knee. Even if you're fully armored, that's it. Now, there is a way to destroy war machines and it, that is by taking off the little flag that is on them. Of course, not always the easiest thing to do, but if you manage to do so, along with friends, it's gone. The people operating the war machines are gonna have little red armbands on them and they are the only ones who are allowed to operate them. So you cannot go like steal their cannons and then shoot them with it. That's not how it works. Only those people are allowed and are certified to use them. So stay safe. Let's talk about the big baddies of the battlefield, the monsters at Biko. There are a few of them, they're pretty terrorizing and they're easy to recognize because they are meant to stand out on the battlefield and what they can do, just like the war machines, is that if they touch you anywhere, you are dead. They have a lot of hit points and they're gonna have a referee that's assigned to them that follows them around. You can kill them, but it's gonna take a lot of hits. It's gonna take at least 10 hits, depending on where you're hitting it. If you shoot it with bow and arrows, it doesn't count. If you throw a javelin at it, it doesn't count. Now, if you shoot it with a ballista, it does count, but it only does one point of damage. If you shoot it with a cannon, the monster's dead. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck trying to shoot a cannon at a monster. It is most likely gonna notice before you're done aiming. Uh, now, again, you can kill those monsters, just be careful of how they're hitting, but also just keep in mind that there is a actual human being under the monster, so they're not a piñata, even though it might feel like it sometimes. Let's just keep in mind that these people in there are very cool for wearing those suits in the heat and doing this for us, so let's stay safe for them and keep that in mind. Now there are a few types of, of objective at Biko. I'm not gonna go too long into those details because it really depends on the fight. You can always try to ask around for questions on how it works during those fights, well, at the beginning of the fight if you really wanna know, but often it's either gonna be little time boxes that you go in, you open it, and then you tap so that, like a bit like a chess timer, so that your timer for your team starts counting, but otherwise you may have little carabiners that you need to put on or remove the enemy's one. But again, just if you're not too certain about an objective, ask anyone on your team and I'm sure they'll be happy to explain it to you so that you know how to fight. Now, talking about teams, I did mention before that if ever you're looking for someone to fight under or you're going there unaffiliated or you get lost on the battlefield and you are on the same side as Brog Steelmaw, I'm hard to miss with that big steel maw around my neck. You can come in and join Grog and his brother Finn and fight under the Boat Barians. There might be glory waiting for you there. Just <laughs> if you're looking for friends on the battlefield and things to do, come along and fight with us. Now, if you have any further questions, you can ask them right down in the comments below. At this point, that's already it for the Biko video. Just wanted to get another one real quick just before Biko. But if you like this video, just make sure to like it, comment down below to let me know if that helped you or not, or if you have any questions like I mentioned. But make sure to subscribe to join the Legion.